Hi everyone, welcome to my new series that I'm calling Ask Rob Trek, where I give quick and dirty answers to questions I may have gotten in a live stream or as a comment in one of my videos. And I felt like the question uh, is one that many of you might have as well and be worth making a video for. Now today's question was, what do those green areas and red bars represent in the histogram that you see in the live view on our Olympus cameras? And that's what we're gonna answer today. I'll be using the Olympus CM10 Mark II as my baseline camera, but this will look familiar to all of the modern digital Olympus cameras that you might have. And uh, basically, when you turn on the live view, this is the default screen. I've done a full reset on the camera. And to show the histogram on the live view, the back of your screen, all you have to do is just click the info button right here. Toggle through the different screens. Uh, just by default, and I'll show you how you can change things as well. But uh, let me go ahead and click the info button once. That turns everything off. I'll click it again. And now I have the histogram showing right here next to my finger. And the question was, there's a little bit of a green area right here underneath the overall histogram. Now the white area is showing where all of your pixels are and how they fall in the different tones. So as you can see from this image here, we have a lot of shadow areas, only a little bit of mid-tones, and then it quickly spikes into the highlights areas. So, of course, that would be the sky here, or all the highlights, and then the mountains and everything are very dark, and that's why there's a lot of uh, pixels down here in the shadow area, and not too much in the mid-tones, just a little bit, you know, probably right in here are the mid-tones. Uh, but what is, this, what is this green area down here? Well, this is actually sort of like a histogram within a histogram. And what it's measuring is not the entire scene that's in the frame, but it's just measuring the center spot right here uh, and giving you the histogram reading on just a spot area right here. So it's kind of like a mini spot meter histogram. All right, so to demonstrate this, I'm gonna put a silver washer right here in the middle of the frame. And you can see that the green area in the histogram here it's uh, moved all the way over to the right, meaning this is a very bright area because it's, you know, it's a silver shiny disc. And the green area is only measuring the center of the frame because if I move this out of the center of the frame, you can see that the histogram is now, the green area anyway, is now spread out again because now it's measuring probably this light area and this dark area. And that's why it's spread out like it is. However, the other question I got was, what is this uh, little orange bar over here, a red bar, represent? And that represents anything that is being clipped in the frame. So as you can see, I moved the uh, silver washer up here, which has created a little bit of a silver or a clipping, because it hits the light just right. And if I tilt it even more, to make a clip just hit the light just right like that you can see that i've completely clipped the washer meaning i'm not going to be able to recover any detail out of the washer and as you can see there's plenty of texture and things in the washer but when it reflects the light just right you can see the orange bar over here is telling me that i'm not going to be able to recover anything in that uh, washer which in this case might represent the sun in the frame. And I don't personally use the histogram much myself, but a lot of people like to do ETTR or ETTL, exposed to the right or exposed to the left to try to recover more detail and maximize their dynamic range, uh, particularly in the shadow area when you expose to the right. So seeing that the sun here is a little bit clipped is okay, it's always gonna be clipped. Uh, when you're doing landscapes, I can um, slow down my shutter speed and push my histogram all the way as far as I can to the right before it hits the uh, red bar here. And now I'm going to recover more detail with less noise in the shadow areas when I go into post-processing without losing too much detail here in the highlights in the sky. And then exposing to the left is trying to recover more detail in the highlights. 
Because if I go into post-processing, I'll be able to recover a lot of this, but maybe not every color. You know, some of the colors are going to be a little bit washed out, even though it's still within the histogram. And that, that's a video I have to do at another time. But let me just go ahead and demonstrate for now, exposing to the left. So I'm going to push the histogram all the way over to about there. And I've never seen a red bar on this side. You know, maybe some other models might show that now. But the EM10, I've never been able to show a red bar on the left side. But now I've exposed this to the left. And you can see I have lots more color here in the sky that I'll be able to recover if that's my goal, if that's the exposure that I want. I want more detail with the colors in the sky, and I don't want to lose any of those colors, then I would expose to the left. And of course, in real life, I'd probably just bracket this shot, but um, all I wanted to do today was just demonstrate um, what the green area means and how you can use the um, histogram for ETTR and ETTL. Okay, so if you're not seeing the histogram uh, pop up in your live view when you toggle through with the info button, you need to go into your menu and check your settings here. So let's go ahead and go into the menu. Scroll down to the custom menu, go into display menu D, and go down here to info settings and click OK. And then we're going to scroll down one more time and you see the little arrow on the right. So I'm going to click right on my D-pad and that'll get me into the live view info uh, menu. And we can toggle things on and off like image only. So we'll leave that there. And then we're going to click right again on the uh, D-pad. And you can see that I have the highlight or uh, histogram checked here. I can turn that off, but I want to make sure that that is checked so that definitely the histogram will show when I toggle through clicking the info button. And I can add the highlight and shadow blinkies here, and I'll just turn that on and the level gauge. And I'll click the menu to go back. And then you can set up another custom menu if you want. We'll just turn this one off. And We'll click menu to go back and I'll tap the shutter button. So now you'll see that I have the level gauge and the histogram showing at the same time like we had set up in the menu. And if I toggle with the info button, now I'm back to the main display. I can click the info button again. And now I'm on image only, so there's no icon showing. And I click the info button again. And now I'm showing the histogram and the level meters. Now another thing you have to be careful of is your live view boost settings. Uh, because when you have the live view boost turned on, what you see in the live view and your histogram are not gonna be representative of the final exposure. So let me show you what I mean, because right now I have live view boost turned off. But if you go into, yeah, we're, you go into menu D, display, go down to live view boost, click okay. And you'll notice that I was in manual mode and I had live view boost turned off. But I can turn it back on to on one, which is the default setting actually. And we'll tap back out to the scene. And now I have live view boost turned on. And you may not notice it because it's very subtle, but the histogram and live view are now representing a normal exposure and not the actual exposure. Because watch what happens when I increase the shutter speed. You'll see here the EV meter is minus 2, right? Right here. Now we're minus 3. So now this image is actually 3 stops underexposed. But what you see in the live view and what you see in the histogram is not representing this 3 stops underexposed. So if I were to take a picture, and let's push play, you'll see that the picture is very, very dark. And the, the histogram for the actual image, you can see now, is definitely exposed to the left, right? Uh, but when we go back to the live view, the live view histogram and everything is being displayed as a normal exposure. So if you're getting weird results, or you're not getting the results you expect, make sure you have the live view boost turned off for whatever mode you're in. So this is the manual shooting live view boost. This is if you're in bulb or live composite. 
and others, which would be your program mode, aperture mode, and shutter mode. So P, A, and S. And then manual shooting is your M mode. So right now I have it turned off, but so if I go into the aperture priority, um, and I underexpose this, I'll just do exposure comp. I'll just dial in negative two exposure. You can see the live view and the histogram changes, right? Let me put it back to zero. But if I go back into the menu and turn Live View Boost on, we'll do on one, you'll see that the Live View now will not change, even though I dial in negative three EV exposure comm, the, the actual image here and the histogram is still showing a normal exposure. So just be careful with that. All right, and that's a quick and dirty answer for what are those green areas and red areas in the histogram on your live view. A little bit about ETTR and ETTL, and also some things you have to be careful of when you're using the histogram in live view when you're creating your exposures, particularly with the live view boost. Uh, but I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, maybe buy me a coffee in the links below. But either way, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.